In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. It's good to welcome you to Hereford Cathedral for this act of worship on the second Sunday of Lent. In today's Gospel, our Lord Jesus invites us to follow him in the way of the cross, the way of self-giving that expresses itself in a life of humble service. So let us begin by opening our hearts to God and praying that the Holy Spirit will guide our way as we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, at the first verse. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. For the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
May I speak in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Poor Peter. He does so often get a rather rough deal. I always feel he's a bit of a fall guy for the rest of us, really. He is so very human. He says what we are all thinking and does just what we would do and then gets rebuked for it and we immediately tell ourselves we would never have said or done that. But of course, we have the advantage of hindsight. Later on in Holy Week, we will watch with horrified empathy as Peter first deserts Jesus and runs away with the other disciples at the arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then we will hear Peter deny three times that he even knows Jesus there outside the high priest's house. And we know in our hearts that we would have done the same. And in our gospel reading today, Peter says just what we are thinking and gets rebuked for it. Let's look at the context of today's gospel reading. Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Caesarea Philippi and Jesus asks his friends what people are saying about him. Who do people say that I am? And they tell him that some are saying that he is one of the great prophets. And Jesus says, who do you say I am? And it is Peter who has the courage to say what they've all been thinking. You are the Messiah. And Jesus doesn't deny it, but tells them not to tell anyone else. And then he goes on to tell them what that really means. Of course, the disciples think they already know what being the Messiah means. They have lived all their lives with the expectation of this great and powerful leader who will come to rescue God's people from foreign domination and will allow them to live out fully their covenant with God, that promise to Abraham that God will make them very fruitful. He will make nations of them and kings will come from them. But Jesus tells them that as the Messiah, he will be rejected by the religious leaders and teachers of the law, that he will suffer and die. All the disciples must have been shocked and dismayed at these words. But Peter is so frustrated and frightened by Jesus' words that he takes his friend and master aside to assure him that all this just isn't necessary. Peter has witnessed Jesus' amazing power not just his charismatic teaching and preaching, but his power of healing, his power even over the elements. And always, Jesus wants to keep all that hidden and quiet. He continually tells the people he heals to go back quietly to their lives, and he often tells the disciples not to say anything to anyone about what has happened. But Peter knows that Jesus could use his amazing powers to show who he is to everyone. That people would then revere him and even the religious leaders would be forced to accept him if only he would show them what he was capable of. But here is Jesus talking about a future of suffering and death. Peter tells him it's just not right and it's not even necessary. And Jesus 
rebukes Peter. Get thee behind me, Satan. And we remember the story of the temptations in the desert when the devil tempted Jesus to do exactly what Peter proposes, to prove that he is the Son of God by doing miraculous things, to make people believe in him the easy way. But this is not the kind of belief, the kind of faith that Jesus wants to bring out in people. And it is not the way he is leading us. When things are hard or difficult, we all long for a miracle to sort things out. If God loves us so much, why does he allow us to suffer? Why doesn't he just wave a magic wand and make everything perfect? These are very human questions, and like Peter, we ask them often in our hearts, if not out loud. The human way is to use all the power we possess to persuade others to do what we want. But God's way is the way of love, and love does sometimes involve sacrifice and loss. The more we love, the more we risk our own security, and it is not always comfortable. Jesus tells his disciples and the crowd that has gathered around them, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. The way of love during this pandemic has been incredibly hard for us all to travel. Having to stay in and stay away from everyone else in order to keep us all safe. And many people, young and old, have sacrificed so much over the last year. And we have seen plenty of examples of people denying their own safety to care for others, and sometimes losing their lives as they do so. Plenty of people have taken up their cross to follow the way of love. And that is how the pandemic will be overcome. Not by force of arms, or by the power of wealth, or by powerful people, but by ordinary people denying themselves for the good of others. Like Peter, we must learn that when the world is in a dark place, God does not wave a magic wand to make it all better. He sends his Son to show us the way of love that leads to new life. It is not an easy road, but we know that Jesus walks in front of us all the way, and when, like Peter, we stumble, he always forgives our human failings and leads us on again to resurrection. Amen.
in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Jesus, Son of God, sent into the world that through you we might be saved. As we breathe in, we receive your salvation. As we breathe out, we place our trust in you. Jesus, Saviour of the world, you embraced and taught the way of suffering sacrificial love. Give to all bishops, clergy and church communities courage to follow wherever you may lead. Today we pray especially for the Anglican Church in Central America, for Julio Murray, its Archbishop and Bishop of Panama, for our own Church of England, for Justin, our Archbishop, for Richard, Bishop of Hereford, and Derek, Archdeacon of Hereford. As we breathe in, we receive, together with your whole church, courage from you. As we breathe out, we offer ourselves in your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, Saviour of the world, we ask you to raise up more and more world leaders who will act selflessly and decisively for the good of all, the well-being of the poorest, the urgent needs of our planet, its atmosphere, its soils, oceans and diverse species. May all have access to clean air and water and good food, and may we all seek after you and praise your name. As we breathe in, we receive a spirit of self-denial and compassion from you. As we breathe out, we recognize that we share this planet's oxygen with each other and with all our fellow creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, Saviour of the world, you gave your life to rescue and heal those whom you met and touched here in this world. We pray for any who are ill today, whether they struggle with COVID or with other types of pain and weakness. We ask that vaccines and supplies of oxygen and equipment may be made generously available to all who need them, including those in remote and impoverished places. As we breathe in, we receive your healing touch on behalf of ourselves and others. As we breathe out, we place in your saving hands those who are struggling to breathe or who are perhaps even now taking their last breaths. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have recently walked the path out of this world into the joy of your full presence and for their grieving families and friends. And we remember with thanksgiving those whose anniversaries of death occur this week. Among them, Brian Beavis, Colin Oldroyd, Phyllis Florence Cope, Alma Noreen Taylor, Ruth Humphreys, William David Gibson, Richard Henry Spate, Alan Payne, and Gerald Rainbow. 
As we breathe in, we ask that you will receive them and us when you come in the glory of your Father with the holy angels. As we breathe out, we lay down all the less important things and ideas of this life to which we cling. In a few moments of quiet breathing, we wait in Lenten hope for you, our Saviour, to breathe upon us your peace and risen life at Eastertide. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers, and direct our way toward the attainment of salvation, that among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us unite these and all our prayers in the words our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, to take up your cross and follow him, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.